Greetings. Love to each and every one of you. Welcome back to our beautiful Sedona. No one here wants to change me. <laughs> Especially when I say it's simple and it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> but of course I'm crazy and everyone, everyone else is right. But I'll keep saying it to you until you let go of that wanting to change me. And almost overnight you'll go free. <laughs> Why? Because you are already free. <laughs> acting and pretending as though you're not. Are you? Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> Is that difficult? Just be your beingness. Do you have any choice otherwise? No. You are free. Always were always will be. Just stop acting unfree. How? Let the mind go quiet. How? Get rid of your ag flap and your mind is quiet. Simple and easy if you do it. If you don't do it, it's impossible. So what does it take to do the most simplistic thing there is in the universe, which is to be yourself, to be infinite, bring it down to the push and pull, I think I'm going to add something to step number one, which says you should want really freedom more than you want anything else. I think I'd like to add to it, convert all your wants convert all your desires to one desire, to go free. Convert all your desires into the desire to go free. And I'll guarantee you, you'll get it in a matter of weeks, if not a few months. Convert all your desires and into the desire to go free. You see what happens then? Everything you go after in the world other than freedom is in the opposite direction of freedom. Every direction you go into in this world other than that of freedom is in the opposite direction of freedom. You're looking to the world to discover yourself. You think this thing can do it or that person can do it. And I don't know how many of you have discovered that there's only one single happiness, one single joy. And that's when you quiet your mind and you just be. Isn't that difficult? <laughs> but if all your desires are not focused in on a desire of going free, you're looking away from freedom. You're looking to get it 
where it is not. Isn't that simple? Is there anyone who doesn't see, understand what I just said? Recognize that what you're going after isn't there. The desire that you had will not give you what you're looking for. That the only joy is you being you. And you'll stop chasing rainbows. You'll stop all the time being outward. And you'll start being all the time inward and releasing the desires, the wants. Of course, get them under approval or control or security. Then release them, otherwise you're wasting it. You can release anger, but it's not effective enough. Releasing one unit of approval or control is releasing one unit in every feeling. So releasing approval or control is releasing hundreds of times more than just releasing on anger. It would take you forever to release all your anger. There's too much of an accumulation of it. And this goes for, for every feeling. You've been accumulating them for millions of years. But under approval or control, you can wipe them all out. The number one desire, the number one want, is for absolute security for this body, right? In order to get that security, if I can get you and everyone else to approve of me, I'll be safe and I will survive, right? If I can't, then I want to make you approve of me so I'll be safe and survive. That's control. So the first wish, desire, is for security of the body. The second is approval. The third is control. And the fourth, fifth, odd infinitum is on the chart. But knocking out the first one, wanting to survive, will undo every other feeling. When you no more want to survive as a body, you have no more want. Then you'll discover the big joke you played upon yourself, <laughs> that you are <laughs> eternal. That you could keep the physical body going forever and ever. But there are much better ways than cooping yourself up in a very fragile physical body. You can be a whole, complete, perfect body. And it looks like this one, without its defects. <laughs> or you could go all the way into the total, whole, complete, absolute, imperturbable peace, which is just beingness, which is just consciousness. You're just conscious, not of bodies and your body. You're just conscious. Maybe the nearest thing to it would be like a daydreaming state where you're thinking of nothing. Everyone can experience the ultimate state because you're in it all the time. And you experience it when your mind goes quiet. It's only the mind that takes you away from it. It's only the mind that makes the noise. Isn't that simple? It really is. 
and it's easy if you do it. You'll do it when all your desires focus in to one desire to be free. After you are convinced that freedom is the most desirable thing there is. You kid yourself when you think now that, yes, I want freedom more than anything else. Were that true, you'd be free right now. Yes, I want my freedom, but all my little toys and play acts and games in the world, I got to take care of them also. The play acts of the world take you away from your beingness in a direction where you're trying to experience a beingness externally where it isn't. And when your mind goes quiet, you discover you set up the entire externality. You set it up, it's only in your mind. And when your mind goes quiet, you discover it. Quiet your mind, you'll know what the world is. I can't tell you what the world's going to be like to you, because it is to you what you make it. It's nothing but the out-projecting of your mind. Now what changes is your attitude toward the world. When you see it for what it is, you'll see it like a night dream appears to you after you awaken from the night dream. It's there, but it's a dream that never really was. And so what is your attitude? Subconsciously your mind is sucked right into all that action by those feelings. That's what the mind is. It's a composite of those feelings. The mind is nothing but perturbation, be there such a word. Every thought is a disturbance. How do you live without thoughts? effortlessly by intuition. You don't do a thing after your mind is quieted. You just witness without even moving, without lifting a finger. You witness everything. So what does it take to do that? No more act flat. See, the egg flap, all the feelings or programs put in as pro-survival of the body. Have you seen that? So subconsciously, as long as you have a feeling, you're on guard in order to survive. But it's so much of it, you look away from it as though it isn't, and you call it subconscious. But as long as you have feelings, subconsciously, you're in a tremendous turmoil. You're on guard lest you die all the time, 24 hours a day. I felt like saying 25 hours a day. If I can get you to see the points I'm making now, it should help you stop chasing rainbows, chasing after happiness where it isn't. It's so obvious that you cannot satisfy a desire. If you satisfied a desire, it would be gone. No more desire. Right? You satisfied it, it's gone. How long would it take you to satisfy all your present desires? A short time, you'd be in a state of satiety and your mind would be quiet. But the more you try to satisfy a desire, the stronger it becomes. Because there is no satisfying a, of a desire. There's only a releasing of it. You must become desireless. By focusing all your desire 
into the desire to go free, knowing that that's where your ultimate happiness lies. You see, you're not convinced that your ultimate happiness lies in being totally free of all your feelings. If you were, you'd just undo them. Undo them. Just you let them push out. Every bit of every feeling is trying to push itself out, trying to expend itself, and you're sitting on top of it, holding it down with that much energy plus a, a little more. If you just stopped holding the suppressed stuff down, it would all run out on its own in a matter of minutes. It would be like puncturing a pressure kettle. You'd be free. Do you see how much you're holding on to the bondages, the things that are keeping you bound? Every desire is like an iron chain around you. Count up all the desires and you have all the iron chains that are binding you. So to sum it up, you've got to convince yourself that the ultimate happiness is freedom. And the ultimate freedom is no ag flat. And that when you do that, then you'll naturally convert all your desires into going free, and you'll do it quickly. The reason why we want you to achieve goals is to bring up the antis to it, the blocks, the negative feelings, so you can release them. After you release them, you get convinced and go for it. Go all out for it. Then you'll discover you can think and instantly have things. I think everyone here has had experiences of things coming without effort, just for the thought of it. If it happens once, it can happen twice. If it happens <laughs> twice, it can happen four times. If it happens four times, it can happen 16 times. If it happens 16 times, it can happen 64. And on and on until it's all gone. Then you'll just think and let the world happen. You notice our whole approach is letting go of. We're never with effort trying to extremely do something. The pounding of the positive thinking world. You've got to allow the world to be what it is. There's one effort you must use, and that's to convert all your desires into one desire, to go free. That's the effort you need to use and should use. Take all that effort that you're wasting out there on the world Put it into wanting freedom only, and you'll get it quickly. Now the times you can grow the fastest are when you're up high. Most of us will use a method when the world is hurting so badly we can't stand it anymore, then we release. You should release when you're up. When you're up high, you can bend down low to, and deep to get a hold of the fear of dying, <clears throat> the fear of living, the wanting to survive as a body, the fear of separation. It's when you're high you can tackle the bottom line, security. Now, when you have no more fear of dying, that's it. Or when you're free, 
you laugh at dying. It's just the opposite of what you thought. The greatest death he ever went through was being born. <laughs> <laughs> and when you die, you get a sense of freedom that's the greatest you ever had in the experience of this body. So again, focus all your wants, all your desires into, into the desire to go free. And get all the egg flap out and be what you are, unlimited. Get rid of your egg flap and then <laughs> your thinking will create without effort. Get rid of your egg flap. You can be the number one singer, the number one actress in the world. <laughs> you won't have a need for it, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a situation every moment of your life. Is there a time when you're not in a situation? When you're asleep? No. You'll never know what you're going to do after until you go free. You might uh, carry through on being the number one singer. And then let it go. <laughs> you don't need anything. You are the all when you're free. You don't have to go for everything. Everyone is you, everything is you. It's your creation. But again, if we think we can't, we make a goal of it, it gives us an opportunity to release. But you want to be super intensive now. I'm telling you, drop the <laughs> whole thing. Why keep working and pushing it? Get rid of your egg flap. If you're released once, you can release twice. If you're released twice, you can release four times. You can release the whole thing. Why don't you release the whole thing? Because of the first thing I said, you have desire for rather than freedom. Desire is your enemy. Desire is your number one enemy. Take your number one enemy and use it against itself. Take your number one enemy desire and convert it into the desire for freedom. You'll be fighting fire with fire. <coughs> How does that sound to you when I say, take your number one enemy desire and focus it in on the desire to go free? But it does puzzle me as to why all of you discover that releasing is a great thing and that you do not take it all. You just don't take it all. Why? Can you tell me? Your programs take over. Or your programs have a mind and a power and a punch and they hit you, right? Congratulations for taking responsibility for your programs. Because as long as you give your power to the programs, you're, you're finished. But who gives the power to those programs? Who holds on to them? See, it's back to want. You don't want to see them. And, you, if, yeah, and that's the basic principle in the method, is letting go of want. Want, 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 want. When there's no more want, you discover you are the all of the entire universe. 
I still see is you're needing to focus all your desire into the desire to go free. I think we ought to make that step one of the intensive and super intensive. It's not wanting freedom more than we want approval or control, but taking all our wants and focusing them into the want to go free. That'll do it. It's simple and it's easy if you do it. So what I'm saying to you now is do it. <laughs> in general, all the time you're out in the world, you're going in the wrong direction. You think your welfare and security lies out there in the world. It's only when you're releasing that you're in the right direction. Coming to courses like this is the very best thing you can do, is stopping going in the wrong direction for a while to concentrate on going in the right direction. It's about time you got together under one roof, like brother monks and sisters, with the resolve to go free immediately. You fulfill that desire, your mind goes quiet, and you're being, and it feels great. Recognize what that good feeling is. There's one single joy, happiness only in this world. That's when you're being your beingness. Discover that. It'll expedite your going directly for it instead of trying to fulfill <clears throat> desires. Now, because it made you feel great, you'll naturally want to do it again and 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 again. Here until eternity. <laughs> Desire mine enemy. Desire mine and my any enemy is a good motto to keep in back of your head. Or put it in any <laughs> language you want. I was quoting, I think it was Yukteswar wrote a song, or somebody wrote a song, Desire My, My Enemy. But desire is your enemy. Because desire is simply the agony of lack. 